one of the biggest problems that I face or when, when you're trying to teach people how to invest in the markets, how to make monies and money in the markets, they they miss really fundamental thoughts or procedures in trying to make money. And I didn't obviously learn this right off the bat. I learned this by, by working around people who were really successful on Wall Street for years. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, you know, is that many people just don't trade with an edge, right? We talk about that and our edge is obviously using probability statistics, using option pricing models, um, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, so to me, uh, that is, you really need to find an edge. When you think about any of the, uh, um, you think about any of the big traders out there, the guys who right. are managing millions of dollars, the guys who've been, uh, be able to perform year in and year out. Those mm -hmm. are the guys who have an edge, obviously. Now an edge can mean anything. It just has to be consistent, right? I like using math to have my edge, um, so to me, you could put your finger up in the air and if you could become consistent and making money doing that, then that could be your edge. But if you really think about it, as we talk about this all the time, it's really about being like the casino. How do you put mm -hmm. the odds and the probabilities in your favor? And that is kind of how I think everybody should trade because how, why wouldn't you? I don't understand the, the these people who go out and uh, you know try to um trade without having an edge they just go and listen to james kramer who's not a bad guy right he's actually really smart but they listen to what he does and to me that's not an edge right you have to have an edge in the overall market i'm sorry about this guy joe i can't find where i have him on <laughs> uh but to me you need to have an edge and too many people invest their money, whether it's in real estate, whether it's starting their own business, whether it's in the market, and they can't explain to me what their edge is. So you shouldn't be investing your money without an edge. Right. But the next thing you need to do, right, is you need to put context around price. Because I get this question all the time, Joel. I get the question when I'm traveling around with, you know, the sharks and I were teaching about financial education. I we're trying to teach them how to use options. Everybody's like, well, what stocks do I buy? And, and, and where do I get in and where do I get out? Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a great question, a phenomenal question. And not many people can answer it. Not many people can tell me, um, you know, they will try to on fundament a fundamental basis. When I say is something expensive or something cheap. And now that could be all relative based on time, but I want to know, whether a move, a price move has is big or small. And how do we do that? Well, I'll, we'll share our screen a little bit here, Joel, and, and, and I'll tell you guys, and I'll try to show you guys how I do it and how it's worked for me uh, for the last, I don't know, 15 years, I think I've been using linear regression. And everybody's like, oh, I can, can I use Bollinger Bands? You can use anything that you feel what you that you can prove to yourself that it actually puts some context around whatever you're trying to prove because it, we try to put context around volatility which is a whole mm -hmm. nother episode we'll talk about but uh to me putting context around price for a trader or an investor uh or a day trader or a, you know whether you're trading options whether you're trading currencies whether you're trading rubber dog poo you need to know where is it expensive and where it is cheap on uh, a micro level to a macro level? And when I mean mi micro, I'm talking, hey, let's go to a five minute chart. And that's a micro level, right? How do we know if this is cheap or not? And, mm -hmm. you know, so to me, anyway, the way I like to use this is I take a linear regression and all this and, it, and we use st standard deviations. Linear regression, it's just let, let's just for and I don't want people to get scared by math and linear regression, all that. Let the computers do the work for you. All you need to know is the linear regression, and we could go deep in it when we have more time, and we do this for our tactical income subscribers, but it's like a mean, right? The average. That's what a linear regression line is. It's just a fancy way of calculating it. And then we have standard deviation bands, which is on the top standard deviation and the bottom. Right now, what you see on my screen is a one standard deviation move to the, to the top and a one standard deviation move from the bottom. 
And I and, know and the screen that you're looking at, just to be clear, everybody, what Jeff's looking at here is the S&P 500 futures. Yes. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Yes, that's exactly what I'm looking at. And you can see right over the course of a year, and this is just using the power of observation to see how big the move that we just had in the S&P 500. One, it had a one standard deviation move and more, probably a one and a half standard deviation move from uh, J January 13th to the bottom here, which was January 24th. That's a pretty big move. And how do I say it's a pretty big move? Well, forget about the math because, Joe, a one standard deviation move, right, is a, it, it's supposed to stay within this range 60, I think it's 62% of the time. 68%, yeah. Oh, 68%. 68. Thank you. 68% of the time. So to me, but when you look, how many times did it do it over the last year? It, you have one time here, barely one time here. So it doesn't have in, happen very often. So when someone said, hey, how big was that down move on the S&P? Well, guess what? It was a huge move mm -hmm. considering we haven't, we've only seen it once in the 12 month period that we're looking at right now. Coming up after the so to yeah. me, um, uh, that is really so showing me that, 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 hey, this was a pretty big move. So the question you got to ask yourself, well, how do you take advantage of this stuff? You know, it's for us as option traders, I know when we have moves like this, well, the probabilities of it staying in these this lower part of the range get are 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 the probabilities of staying there are less than they are on going lower. So I'm able to be able to take and put trades on and use strategies when I see the one standard deviation move or one and a half standard deviation moves. I mean, look how many days it stayed below it. One, two, three, four, five, six days before it went back to the band, right? So it bounced back up and you were able to sell puts and you made a lot of money off of just this one very simple concept, which is don't get so focused up on what's happening now that you forget the context in which it's happening, right? So when Correct. we talk about putting context around price, that's what we mean. What? How do we know if the move is big or not? Re big relative to what? And using these linear regression lines along with standard deviation lines on that linear regression helps you put context around the price, helps you figure out if the market really, based on past patterns, really is likely to keep crashing or not. Uh, right. For example, that, like what just happened. And now, Joel, the next thing to do when you have that is you, use, you try to find confluence, right? Where you go, this is a daily chart using standard deviation on daily. Well, what happens if we go to weekly? What does it look like on a weekly, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we got pretty, you know, you can see on weekly moves, we very rarely see the move that we had in the pandemic, right? So when you start to see the move that we had from the top of the, where we were in the market to the bottom, mm -hmm. to me, that's a pretty significant move. And it's starting to show me how big the move was in relation to other moves that we've seen in the past. And what it does, it kind of, it gives me confidence to put on certain strategies and what strategies to use. And now you use that and you try to use other, uh, you know, like moving averages, which we like to use to try to help you gauge on the trend of the stock. If you're trying to pick direction where we here, you know, best of the capital, uh, when we manage my hedge fund, we're much more of a, um, you know, non-directional trading firm. We do do 30% of our fund does directional trading, but for the most part, we're waiting and be very, you know, selling, selling puts and selling calls and call spreads and put spreads to use the, the, the tools, right. And the edge that we have in the market, which is the option pricing model, which is standard deviations, um, and which is volatility, which we could talk about another time. Now, Jeff, it, I want to be very clear for anybody out there who's who's listening and watching. We don't believe that this is the only way to put context around price. We don't believe that there's only one right way to trade. But at tactical income, what we do believe is you have to trade with an edge. And we have found a way to do that. And this is just kind of a simple example of one of the tools that we use to do that.